PlayStation Direct is giving you an opportunity to pre-order your console even before its price. What will Microsoft have to do about that? And we have news on the Apple I iOS and issues with Epic Games and the potential of Unreal 5 Engine and some of the developers using that engine that may not happen. Ladies and gentlemen, Platform Gamer Podcast starts right now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is your boy, Desmond Dukes. Thank you so much for joining me here on Platform Gamer Podcast. And of course, as always, my co-host to the right here <laughs> is none other than Damar Dukes. Go ahead, Damar. What's up, guys? What's up? You guys ready for another treat once again? Uh, we'd like to welcome you guys back to the podcast. We definitely got some cool stuff to talk about. Um, definitely some, uh, definitely giving, going to give you guys a lot of our opinions as far as some of the latest topics that's been coming out into the latest news and latest tweets. So we're definitely going to share our uh, view on that and definitely go into some a little extra detail as far as when it comes to some of the release dates and things of that nature. So Desmond. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's so odd because I don't have my stuff <laughs> pointed the right way. So it's like I'm pointing left when it's right on the screen. It's it's really <laughs> weird. But anyway, hey, you guys, make sure you follow us right here on YouTube. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Turn on that bell for all notifications and smash that like button. Better let destroy that like button. And uh, make sure you leave a comment here because we love comments here, here on our podcast. And you can also reach us at um at uh facebook.com slash platform gamer podcast you can reach us there so if you want to catch up on some of the latest and greatest on that you can find us on there or you can meet us and talk to us or even watch out for any information we put out on twitter and instagram at platform gamer p1 absolutely absolutely and now without further ado let's go ahead and get this going okay so a couple of days ago, PlayStation had released um, released a statement, and it really wasn't that much of a statement. It kind of just came out of nowhere um, that they are doing a what they call a direct pre-order. Now, what that means is that they will be giving you an opportunity to be the first to pre-order the PlayStation 5 through Sony PlayStation themselves. Um, as far as the pre-orders for the general public, that is still not yet announced, but this is kind of the first step working our way to it. Now, there is a process. What that is, what that entails is, is that what you will have to do is that you will have to go on PlayStation's website, which we will have a link in the description below uh, a little bit later, but you will go to that link and you will put in your, um, your gamer ID and you'll confirm that ID and then submit it. Now, this is all like a lottery drawing. That's the way they have this thing set up. It's like a lottery drawing. So if it comes, when it comes to that, that means you may get selected, you may not. It doesn't really, you know, play a factor in it, but it, nevertheless, it goes by, um, by who gets selected. So I'm assuming it goes by how often you're on your PlayStation, how many games you've purchased, um, your, how long you've been a PlayStation Plus subscriber. There's probably going to be a number of factors that will help edge you out and in getting into that pre-order category. Now, they will let you know through email about getting uh, a pre-order. When you receive that email, you will only have a short amount of time. Now, according to what I have here, that with some of the, um, the frequently asked questions and rules, as far as... Um, this pre-order thing goes. So here are some of the things that you would be guaranteed to get if you are selected and you decide to pre-order through PlayStation. You will get a choice of one PlayStation 5 console or a PlayStation 5 console digital edition. You cannot get one or the other. You can only get, uh, you can't get both. You can only get one or the other. So you get to pick on that. And then you get 
some added choices such as uh, you get you can have up to two uh, dual sense wireless controllers, two dual sense charging stations, two pulse 3D wireless headsets, two media remotes, and two HD cameras. Now keep in mind you don't have to have two of everything. You know um, I'm pretty sure you know that's just the the limit of where how much you can get. So for me. Um, I'll probably be getting two controllers just, you know, just to play it safe. But you ha people have to understand, too, that you could be like, oh, I get all this stuff. Now, keep in mind, if you get all that stuff, remember, you still have to pay for it. So whether they're going to do it through some type of financial financing type way or you just got to pay it all up front in your credit card, that's something we still don't know because they haven't released the price yet. That is what I got as far as that information. Now, you can also find frequently asked questions on there that will help you answer some of those and get some of your questions answered that you may have involving this direct to pre-order. So, I mean, Damar, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think that um, the fact that this is going to be a first come, first serve kind of basis as far as for that, and mm -hmm. the fact that only select few are going to be chosen for this. Um, some people, I'm sure, are going to be wary as far as, well, how is it that even though Sony has literally stated that they're going to be upping the production of the PlayStation 5 to where they're going to have, you know, 10,000 plus units or so. And it's like with them increasing their capacity of the number of consoles being built, this still is going to pretty much pull up still a problem of concern as far as even though they have this going on, there is still going to be that factor in which case you may not actually get selected in to get a, to get a system. And mm -hmm. even though they have increased production, there's still a lot of the process of production that goes through like the quality insurance and things of that nature. So there's still going to be a lot of factors that are going to come into play when it comes to this. Not to mention the fact, as like Desmond said earlier, is the fact that there hasn't been any price releases as far as for that, which means right now, even as we speak, Sony and Microsoft are still at a stalemate to see who is going to draw the gun first on trying to be the first one to jump on and take advantage of those big impulse buys. Because mm -hmm. typically that's usually how these things go when it comes to any kind of new console, any kind of new phone. There's always going to be that boom of people just flocking out to get it just because it's the newest thing. But because of the fact that there hasn't been any price releases yet, now we're going to see who, which system is going to prevail in these console wars per se if Sony decides to pull the trigger first and say, okay, we're coming out at $499. So now all of a sudden Sony might end up taking the hit on the chin and Microsoft might come out and say, well, okay, cool. Now we're coming out at 450. How do you like that? So then all of a sudden with Microsoft, um, cause they're going to be doing their, uh, their pre-orders uh, soon too. And with that being said, also, we're not exactly sure how many units Microsoft is going to have uh, for release date come the holiday season. So there's definitely going to be a lot of stuff as far as for, the pricing, the price for the accessories and things of that nature. And plus, we still don't even know what all attachments and uh, added peripherals Microsoft might have in, in their uh, package bundle when it comes to the Xbox Series S. You know, that actually brings up a very good point because um, people need to keep this in mind. Sony was the only one that we know of that has stated that they were going to have a shortage. Now, Microsoft could have a shortage and they're just keeping it on a low. We don't quite know, but I can't tell you from what some of the stuff that is said here. Um, Sony has stated that due to limited quantities and high demand, we will be limiting PlayStation pre-order reservations to one PSN ID. And it goes on to add by stating, um, yes, although these will be open to the general public when that happens, um, they said only PlayStation 5 console reservations will be limited to those invited to the pre-order. So what that means is with Sony doing a direct pre-order, however many people they get for that pre-order that are selected, they are guaranteed one. So it's not like it's gonna you're going to get selected and then it's going to be sold out, you know. But you do have a limited window on when you need to do it. How long is that window? You don't really know until you're selected. So I put in for mine. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get selected. 
I so, played for mine. So we will uh we will see how that goes. But if I get selected, I mean I've got I've got I've got my money ready to go, man. It's it's ready to go. <laughs> Hopefully they give us at least like a week to like two weeks and then end it. That way, you know, I can definitely ensure that uh that I won't have any surprises come up. <laughs> <laughs> but but that also brings up another good point. Both of these consoles, from rumor, I might add, this is just rumor, that they are both rumored to be coming out in November. Now, Sony's is rumored to be a week later than Xbox's. I believe they said um, in the rumor November 20th, 13th or 20th. It was one of the two. And then Microsoft Series X, Xbox, is a week before. I don't know how I feel about them coming out that close, especially with everything still happening, you know, with with COVID and all of that other stuff and people not having money. I would assume, or at least I would have assumed that Microsoft would have came out sooner. Because remember, Microsoft is the ones that's on that's in that's you know that's trailing right now. If this was a foot race, they are trailing by a lot. So Microsoft really needs to find a way to get the step up now. Xbox Game Pass and Xbox um, X Cloud are two big additions to the Xbox ecosystem. With that being said, that will help them uh, gain possibly new uh, new people to join, new customers to join that ecosystem. But Sony has had that has had their ecosystem for the last decade or two. Yeah. You know, Sony has been like has been running the show and a lot of people have trusted Sony very, very much to the point that to them, like myself, it doesn't matter how much it's going to be. I'm getting one, (laughs) you know, I'm going to make it happen. Now for the general consumer, is this necessary? Is it truly necessary to get yourself a PlayStation five right now? Cause we, I mean, the rumor price that we're all trying to think of is 500 on both the PlayStation and the Series X. That's that's kind of what they're going. And then, of course, you know, their digital versions, which are supposed to be their lesser versions, are going to come in at a little bit cheaper. But would it be smart for someone in the general population who is, you know, who wants a console, who is struggling right now, is that something you feel, Damar? Do you feel that this is something that, you know what, I think I'm just going to wait? What do you think? Yeah, I think even with all the hype and the buzz that's flowing around for the PlayStation 5, I really don't think it's going to be, I don't think there's that big of a rush as far as for getting this, especially given the fact that there's still going to be a lot of things that's going to be getting work done. Like, for example, the PlayStation Network. How exactly is the PlayStation Network going to filter out as far as for that? You know, um, also the VR technology, you know, how much backwards compatibility improvements is Sony going to make into the PlayStation 5? Is this something that's going to be pretty much a full loadout once it once the console releases or are they going to be is there some kind of special update that they can add or a patch that allows you to be able to play other um, other um other games of the past. We're not sure. We know the Xbox Series X has full backwards compatibility. So Mm -hmm. when you look at it from that standpoint, I mean, I really don't think there is any rush as far as for that. I mean, technically, there's never been a rush for, there's never been a need to rush. Typically, when you have just that huge flock of people going to buy the newest thing, it's usually because of the fact that it's the trendy thing to do. It's the, it's the kind of thing that people have kind of almost wired themselves into doing. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's really not something that people need to just, you know, you know, don't put off your rent payments just to try to get your hands on one of these. <laughs> All right. You know? so, yeah. And that, I, and that actually plays a factor into Sony's playbook because Sony really wasn't for sure how many people were actually going to want to get this thing if they priced it at whatever they they're thinking of pricing it. And they had a blessing in disguise. Surprisingly, a month ago, there was a leak or not even a leak, a a huge rumor that certain stores were doing pre-orders on PS5. 
which Sony never said. Sony never said happened. Like mm -hmm. they like they never told these stores, these retailers, hey, we're doing pre-orders. Here you go. And it was like it felt like last minute. So then the majority of these stores had lines of people waiting and nobody really knew what was going on until someone asked them like, hey, like, why are you guys in line? And they said, we're here to pre-order our PS5s. Well, now these employees are looking dumbfounded because they never heard anything. They didn't know anything. So they're probably scrambling. And I've been in the retail. I've been in GM. So I know what that's like. You go back there then you got to scramble and find out information on what's going on. You got to talk to these managers. Uh, managers got to try and talk to the higher ups and all of that stuff. Only to find out Sony never said anything about doing pre-orders yet. In fact, they didn't even know how that rumor got started. So, but they actually got to see the number of people, the numbers of people that were in droves lined up to get their PS5. And I think, in my opinion, my thing is, I think that's what drove them to be like, you know what? Let's increase the amount of PlayStation 5s that we're going to produce because they seen the what was what was what people were waiting for. They were ready. I mean, they were lines of people ready. And Sony seen that. So I think they took advantage of it and was like, OK, we kind of have an idea now. So let's go ahead and ramp up production a little bit and let's get some more of these PS5s made. And I think that was the contributing factor to them wanting to ramp up production because if that had not happened, the shortage would have still been even shorter. Just my mm -hmm. opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. that That's actually um, well stated, well stated. And also when it comes to those pre-orders, I mean, obviously eventually... Um, the the public stores are going to be uh, getting these things too, more than likely, who knows. Mm -hmm. But with the way technology is going forward and with the current landscape that things are in right now, is this going to be a trend going into the next generation console after that? Now, when I say as far as uh, the current uh, landscape of things, I'm not meaning as far as within COVID or anything like that. I mean, as far as right. the fact that as far as the fact that when it comes to as the technology continues to grow and get better, obviously trying to figure out that 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 magic price tag, what is sufficient for the type of power you're putting in the hands of, of the consumer. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it from that standpoint, like we could look at these kinds of stalemates happening going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can see that. And we still don't know what Microsoft is doing. I mean, it's really, it's not even so much more now about the console wars because pretty much from a, from a performance standpoint, we, when we, last time we talked about the specs, we know Xbox is a little bit more powerful. But when we're coming from the world of console wars, that has become a distant memory. Like uh, the majority of people that I know don't even care about the console wars on where. However, there is a console price war that is happening because both of these consoles are playing a game of chicken right now. Who's going to who's going to drop the price first and who's going to follow suit? I think that's what's what's happening here. And I think if I was PlayStation, I'm already confident that. That I can I can we could get sales. We'll get sales right. regardless. I say go ahead and drop the price because whatever Microsoft's going to do, yeah, people may get that console depending on how they price it, but I feel it's just going to be even, Steven, on both of them. I think it's going to be right around the same ballpark. So at this point, it really doesn't matter. That's true. That's true. I, yeah, yeah. And if we also take into consideration, too, I believe um, Sony did say that they were going to do a price reveal in the month of August. And as we all know right now, it's the 29th. Time is ticking, which means mm -hmm. one way or the other, Microsoft is just buying their time at this point because Microsoft hasn't hasn't really locked themselves into, okay, we're going to give you guys a price within this such such a date. No, they haven't done anything like that. Sony has already, for the most part, locked themselves in. They've got to come out with some kind of price tag and they're just going to have to just dive in head first at this point. But yeah, time is ticking. 
And as pre-orders, more and more pre-orders are coming in, all that other worrisome stuff as far as are people going to buy, they know the buyers are there. People mm-hmm. are already ready with money in hand. So yeah. I feel like, I think Sony is kind of, they're kind of worrying over nothing because their their fan base has always been with them ever since the PlayStation first came out. And everyone who's buying one has grown with the PlayStation. You know, I know they probably read some of the feedback and things of that nature when it comes to the fan base. And as the, the, the PlayStation console has evolved all the way up until this point, and of course, naturally will continue to evolve. But the buyers are going to be there, regardless of what price tag you throw on it, rather than it's a little too high or no, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is, it's definitely, they're going to be in line. People are going to be in line. Yeah. And and that's and that would be a testament to Sony for, for stepping up like that. But nevertheless, I mean, let's be clear. When these consoles drop the price, people are, go- are going to know. But I have a suspicious feeling that I think they're going to wait until September. I don't know why. I think by mid-September, I think we'll get a price reveal. I think they're going to cut this really close. And I was reminded by somebody that when the Nintendo Switch was coming out, they waited one month before the system's release before they dropped the price. Mm. Or, yeah, revealed the price. So they could see that as a formula because that's helped Nintendo quite a bit. So this could be a way that Sony and Microsoft could be doing the same thing. So they could wait until the middle of September. They could wait as late as October. But to me, it it I don't know how I really feel about that. It's just I don't like you want to give people enough time that if there are certain people that do that do want one, everybody for the most part, knew the PS5 and the Xbox Series X was coming. Yeah. So it was just a matter of knowing what time of ta- what type of time frame that they were going to work with so they knew what they had to save up for, you know, for the ones that's still working, to save up for and be able to get that console. Because they may have been just doing it a little bit at a time. They may do, like, with some of their credit cards. I know some credit cards have a point system, like a reward system. They could use that, so that way that saves them money. I think that's one option. Especially when you try and purchase it at a retail. So I mean, there's there's plenty for it to, you know, for Sony to go ahead and get away with. But what do you guys think? You know, you guys jump into the comments below and let us know uh, your thoughts on this because this is this is interesting. You know, I mean, we're really trying to see now just how both of these consoles are going to do it. So I don't know. It's it's I don't know. <laughs> And just to add, and just to add one little nougat of information too, as far as when it comes to um, these price reveals and release dates and such, um, the fact that for the most part it seems like both Microsoft and Sony are trying to come out and release their consoles in November, we also have to think about the fact of I'm thinking the reason, another reason why they happen to be kind of at a stalemate with the pricing is due to the fact of we also have to take in consideration about Black Friday. November twenty seventh. Mm-hmm. So right. now, when you think about this, it's like, okay, are you going to come out with a price for this? But then, let's say it releases on the eighteenth, and then you have the tw- then you have Black Friday, and then you have your Cyber Monday, and things of that nature. When when online stores are doing their their flash sales, you know, are you going to be are are they going to do any adjustments for the prices during these particular peak mm-hmm. times? Because this is where, you know, Black Friday, those are kind of like those special times where retailers who really haven't been making their their quarterly sales or their yearly sales, this is where they can try to make up some of that flux that they lost so much, especially due to the COVID shutdown. So now the fact of the matter is, will Sony and Microsoft take advantage of this? Or will they be doing any price adjustments come Black Friday? Yeah. So just to let you guys know, um, I just dropped down there below into the uh, comments section. Um, if you'd like to be a part of that and for the direct pre-order and you want to, you know, toss your little <laughs> toss your little gamer tag ID into the hat, um, I put down the link to that website. So make sure if you're going to do it, you can go to that website. Do it fast. I have no clue how long that's going to be up. I think they're just going to wait until a certain time and then they're going to pull it. 
and then start doing their lottery uh, draft. But right now, now's a good time to jump in it. So we left that link for you guys down below uh, in the comments section for you guys to uh, get your hands on uh, on possibly possibly a pre order. So that is that. Now, next order of business. Oh man, oh man, this is this is a doozy. This was a when I first heard about this story, I was like, "Wow, this is nuts!" <laughs> like I, I literally could not believe it. Literally could not believe it. So, Epic Games right now is in a legal dispute with Apple I iOS um, company, and it has somewhat to do with some of the developing engines that they have been working on and that they've been doing, particularly like the, the Unreal 5 engine and how a lot of these companies are using it. Well, they were, Apple was trying to get rid of the iOS and the Mac OS on a lot of these. Well, a lot of developers use those for when they use the Unreal, whether it's Unreal 4, Unreal 3, whatever engine they're using. Well, Epic Games right now is in a position where they could lose the Unreal Engine in its legal fight with Apple. Now, this was posted by The Verge, and this was a really long article, so I'm just going to read bits and pieces of it. But it says here, Epic's legal fight with Apple over the future of Fortnite has quickly evolved into an external battle for one of the game studio's most lucrative and important assets, the Unreal Engine platform. Um, says here, after removing Fortnite, yeah, by the way, Fortnite was removed from the uh, Apple Store. So if you were trying to find your copy of Fortnite, pretty much everybody that has a phone or whatever was probably had one anyway. But if you were trying to get your copy of that on Apple's um, Apple's um, App Store, you are not going to find it there. So just to give you the heads up on that. But anyway, um, Apple targeted Epic's other development accounts uh, that were tied to its game engine, um, putting at risk the company's licensing business by threatening to cut iOS and Mac OS support. Epic secured a last minute temporary restraining order late Monday evening. This was just this past Monday um, to protect the business in a short term, but the fate of the Unreal Engine is still up in the air, um, endangering an entire ecosystem of third party tools. They rely on the engine. Damar, what are your thoughts on Apple basically cutting the plug on Epic Games engine that a lot of a lot of developers use in their games, whether it's indies or AAA titles? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Who man, to see, this is definitely going to be this is definitely going to change the overall landscape of the entertainment business when it comes to those companies that happen to use the Unreal 5 engine for their, for their productions. Um, I do know that um, there was a legal representative of Epic Games who talked about the fact of this is that pulling the plug on the Unreal 5 engine is going to do more damaging, more, uh, more damaging work than anyone could possibly imagine, especially given the fact that the Unreal Engine is used beyond just game developing companies. Um, mm -hmm. I know uh, big budget um, production companies such as Disney and LucasArts Films, they also use Unreal Engine, like uh, The Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. Unreal 5 Engine is used on that. So now when you think about the fact of them, of Apple pulling the plug on this, this means more than just a, a potential shutdown of potentially some of the big uh, pro um, big projects that are going on right now. But also we're looking at, you got to think all of these things, whether it's games or rather it's a television series or a movie, these are plans that are made months, uh, weeks, months, years in advance. 
Mm-hmm. So now all of a sudden, now all those projects have to be scrapped. And now you have to start over from scratch with potentially a whole nother engine that may or may not be sufficient to be able to produce the type of effects that they originally were going for. Now, so this, one thing, yeah. oh, sorry. One thing to remember too, is that whatever current, pro- if there's any current projects that's going on, they are allowing them to continue and finish those. It's just right. whatever future ones or ones that are only like maybe halfway done or a quarter of the way done, those are the ones that are in danger. So that's one thing for everybody to keep in mind. The ones that are like either finishing or doing uh, post-production on a lot of it involving visual effects and things like that, um, they are being allowed to finish and continue those. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. And also, um, um, we also have to take into consideration the fact that, um, you know, for for some of the type of technology that the Unreal Engine had brought, I know that there are other developers that are coming out with their own. I believe uh, Epic Games actually has another type of um, of uh, uh, model engine that they're working on. I cannot remember the name of it, but it's something that's kind of, it's not exactly in the infancy stage, but it's definitely something that they've been working on. So more than likely, it seems this has already been in production, probably when the lawsuit started to happen or even before then, not saying that Epic Games eventually was going to move away from the Unreal Engine. But right. I know there's also... Um, um, there's other uh, game developers who are also trying to come up with their own um, with their own uh, engines as well. Um, now, I do know that um, that Unity Unity is the other uh, is the other company that makes their engines also uh, those engine tools for other developers as well. So they'll have they could have a backup plan with Unity. But Epic Games seems to be like the main core focus, excuse me, focused one for them to use. Now, another part of this article, it says here that uh, the engine is also how Epic built its own games, including Fortnite and past major hits like Gears of War and Unreal Tournament, which, you know, everybody knows about that one. Um, scores of big budget games makers have also foregone custom in-house engines for Epics. So that's a big key thing. A lot of them had their own opportunity to build their own engines and use their own engines, but they like using the Epics engine. So keep in mind, these developers pay Epic for that engine so they could use it. It's not just handed to them. They are, you know, they are, they have to purchase that and then they use that engine. So with that, happening you know there's no telling how it's going to go down and again unity also has its own that at you know a lot of third developers use um unity i believe in fact there's there's three companies that make um engines epic makes one obviously the unreal engine unity has one and cryotech cryotech also has one so so if you look at games like crisis 3 that uses the Cryotech engine, which they are currently, them and Unity are both currently working on brand new engines as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's true, that's true. And also, adding on to that, I know they also, because uh, I'm also on the verge too. Um, hmm it also stated that for those people who had deleted the uh, the Fortnite game, it still might be able to re-download that and play it. But unfortunately, there will be no more further updates or any other apps presented by Epic Games as far as for that. That's another thing, too. That's another thing that these developers are going to run into. With patches and updates that goes into... Um, their games for fixing like little buggy type problems and situations like that, they're not going to be able to do that anymore. So basically what you get is what you get. If your game is buggy, you ain't getting no patches. And that's if Apple wins this case. Now, um, it says here that uh, the court has, has restrained Apple from revoking that account for the next few weeks. 
but it remains to be seen whether it will keep the account protected for the full duration of the trial. Because remember, that trial is, is supposed to happen soon. In fact, uh, a temporary injunction hearing uh, to settle the matter is scheduled for September 28th. So even though they only have a couple weeks of this restraining order, the trial doesn't even get started as far as, you know, like injunctions go until next month. So it's like, I, I, what, Epix is in a real tight situation and they could potentially lose customers. And we're not talking about customers like you and me. We're talking about customers of different developers. Those are their customers. They could potentially lose them because if they can't have those guys to be able to fix bugs and stuff, they're not going to be able to do business with Epix. As a matter of fact, a couple of them, upon hearing of this situation, had already pulled out. So I don't know, man. Epix is in, they're, they're in some serious trouble right now. And I'd hate to not be able to, you know, relish in the greatness of what the Unreal 5 engine, because that was slated to come out next year. And a lot of developers are, are, are using it right now, but it was slated for use next year. Like one of the games that's being used for the Unreal Engine 5 right now is Hellblade 2. And that's for the Xbox. So, you know, how much, because they're still, they're still working that out through the game as well. How much of that is going to affect them? So as far as I know, they were not one of the ones that pulled out. I think they were smart. They was like, we're going to stick with, with Epix on this. We're going to take their side. We're going to do what we need to do and continue. But Epix has been asking for testimonies from different developers and publishers to help them out with this case so that way it could be so the tables can turn on their side now in the event that epics wins this thing how is this going to affect apple going forward mm. that is true that is true because this is definitely going to be this is definitely going to leave a bad taste in the mouth as far as between the two these two juggernaut companies especially given the fact that i mean it's kind of it's it's definitely going to be a love hate relationship going forward after all this after the dust is finally settled because the fact of the matter is they both need each other this this mm -hmm. this goes on without saying so I think going forward there's probably going to be is, there's definitely going to be a lot of adjustments for uh for contract negotiations when it comes to that um, there's definitely going to be possibly some um, new percentage uh uh renegotiations as far as for that yeah they're yeah, yeah they're gonna have to renegotiate something because apparently apple is trying to get them on possibly um a breach of contract that's what they're trying to get epics for i'm not sure exactly why this breach took place or how it took place but nevertheless man epic is in some serious serious trouble and like i said these these other developers you know, when you look at it from the perspective of them, all they're sitting back doing this, <laughs> you know, biting their fingernails because they have no idea what's happening. Like, how did, like, some of them are probably questioning, like, how did this even happen? How'd this take place? So right. Apple and Epic, they've got, they've got some work to do, but nevertheless, um, their hearings will begin on September 28th. That could go on for months. Yeah, and that is definitely well into drive. next year. Yeah, it's definitely going to drive. This isn't going to be just an open shot case kind of thing. And also, I just wanted to read a quick statement that was uh, that was uh, reported from Apple themselves, which it reads, we are disappointed that we have had to terminate the Epic Games account on the Apple Store. We have worked with the team at Epic Games for many years on their launches and releases. The court recommended that Epic comply with the App Store guidelines while their case moves forward. Guidelines they followed for the past decade until they created this situation. Epic has refused. Instead, they repeatedly submit Fortnite updates designed to violate the guidelines of the App Store. Mm. This is not fair to all other developers on the App Store and is putting customers in the middle of their fight. We hope that we can work together again in the future, but unfortunately, that is not possible today. Now, 
this is this is this is this is something. I mean, when you look at it from the perspective of Apple, I, I get it. I totally get it. I'm not a huge fan of them doing it, but I get it. You know, when it comes down to business, this is this is this is what it comes down to. You were told multiple times, Epic, not to breach our, our negotiation agreement, not to breach that. Don't keep giving people updates when these other developers have not even had a chance to do any of theirs. But yet you keep doing this same repeated process and then everybody else is getting shafted on these updates. It's not right. We don't like that. We're putting a stop to it right now. And I think they were just fed up. So from Apple's point of view, they they felt what they they needed to do was necessary. Do mm-hmm. us as customers agree with it? Maybe, maybe not. That depends on the individual. But what I can say is that if Epix did start this mess, then they deserve to have what had what is happening to them. But now us, the consumer, and the consumers of the developers and the publishers are caught in the middle of this crossfire. And they're we're starting to see it now, but there will be some collateral damage of all of this, regardless of how this turns out, there's going to be some collateral damage. So yeah. now it becomes a complete PR nightmare for both companies. Cause now they're having to have people take each other's side and, you know, build, build this relationship that would tear them apart, but keep everybody else separate. Almost like the civil war, how you had the North and South. That's kind of how this feels. So I think with Epic, they need to, they just need to work within the guidelines and what was given to them. You know, obey the law, obey the contract. That's what you were supposed to do. You failed to do that. And this is the end result. Do I feel Apple had the right to do that? Yes, because it was a breach of contract and legally they can do that. However, that does not mean we have to like it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So. Hopefully, hopefully, as as more time progresses and stuff, um, there will be more testimonies, and there's going to be uh, more developers and such coming forward, giving their side of the thing. As far as look, you know, we use the Unreal, we use the Unreal Engine. You know, this is what we have going on. This is these are the types of things that we do. This is why this is so important to the, the fruition of our business. You know, I mm-hmm. do know that um, um, many, um, many platforms have tried to actually get some kind of response from uh, Disney and LucasArts Films, but so far neither one has made any open statements as far as towards uh, this particular situation. So hopefully maybe they'll speak out later as more information come, uh, becomes available. But for right now, it seems right now very few people are talking. Yeah, so you guys out there, let us know in the comment section what you guys think of this entire situation. Should should Epics be should they be the good guy in all of this and Apple be the bad guy? Should Apple be the good guy and Epics be the bad guy? You guys make that determination, but we will definitely keep you guys updated on any future developments involving this case. So now, back to Something that's a little more fun that I like to call game reviews. Oh, yes. So I have to tell you. So these last couple of days, I have been playing the Star Wars series of Vader Immortals for the PlayStation VR. And I have been absolutely in love with this game. Oh, my goodness. So there's a couple of different things. one of the main things that I love about this is that I'm getting a chance to hold a lightsaber, even though I don't really have a lightsaber, I'm just holding a motion controller, but it's like you're holding a lightsaber and it's like the coolest feeling. You're like wheeling this thing around and like, yeah. So I'm having so much fun with that thing. And you know, I, I still have episodes two and three. Now, for those of you that don't know, they just dropped um, earlier this week. They just dropped um, uh, the Star Wars Vader Immortals. Um, It was originally exclusively on the Oculus, and then um, they decided to expand it to PlayStation. 
So now PlayStation has it. Now graphically, it's still pretty good. It's it's up there. It's nothing like a PC, you know. Excuse me, but graphically, it's very good. The sound, really good. This it's buggy in spots, like uh, like when some of the dialogue comes in, you can hear kind of a like a like a like a like a distortion in it, almost like like a glitch, <laughs> and it like it it. I don't think it happens at random, but I'm not quite sure because I've only done certain parts just once. So if I go back and play those parts and it does it again, then I know it's just within that section. So it's not without, you know, it's problems. But for the most part, I have had a blast with this thing. Now you can use force powers, which I haven't gotten to yet because each episode involves you doing, getting a certain thing. Like in episode one, you're learning how to use a lightsaber the whole time. Then you go to episode two, then you're learning to use force powers. And then in episode three, you're taking like, you're, you know, using force powers on enemies. You're still under blasters and shooting them, all kinds of stuff. So it's really, really interesting. I haven't had a chance to like do a deep, deep dive into it. But from what I played so far, I have really, really enjoyed it. Now, the droid that's with me, I think she was supposed to be comic relief. And she's she's okay. She's a, she get her she gets a little annoying. I will say that the the droid that with you she gets annoying. But you know, with all everything that's going on, it's like okay. I guess I'll just have to tolerate it. Um, but it's cool because when you're using a lightsaber, especially in battles, you're blocking and I, I'm moving around like a lot in my house. So. Where I have it at is in my bedroom, and um, I have like a lot of open space, and I'm still running into stuff because I'm so involved in what I'm doing. <laughs> but the game is so fun, and it's it's on the PlayStation Store. They didn't do any pre-order, so that's probably why you didn't see it until the day of its release. So, which was I do believe the 25th of August was when it was released. So the, you get all three episodes because on the Oculus, you were paying for the episodes separately. But on the PlayStation version, you're actually getting all three episodes together and you're giving it, getting them for $29.99, 30 bucks, depending on where you live, you know, taxes included. But this is a great game. If you own a PlayStation VR and you're still having to wait for Star Wars Squadrons, which I'm looking forward to before i was kind of worried about it but now i'm definitely looking forward to it then this this will this will take care of your appetite for now there is a, a section where you do like a lightsaber training dojo and it's basically you do all of these different tasks like you know like little things here and there and you can you're fighting more and more and more um but it, you get to like a hundred it's like this like 120 zones. I think I'm only at like 19 <laughs> and it's hard, <laughs> but yeah, you're like deflecting bullets and you're blocking attacks. I mean, like everything is happening like at once and I have no force powers right now. So I'm going to have to play through episode two. Now the entire three game series will take, will run you probably about two hours to beat. The entire thing because i beat the first part in like 30 minutes which if you guys have not been on my youtube channel i did do a complete ga uh, game through of that uh, on the first episode so i played through that entire thing so you guys can view it um on my youtube channel at uh, desmond dukes but nevertheless that game is super fun. If you own a VR, I highly recommend it, especially for the lightsaber battles. Again, it's glitchy. It's kind of buggy, especially like with your lightsaber, like your character's wrists are like this. So when you try to straighten them out, then they do this. And it's, it's like, it's weird. It's really weird. I try just like, forget this. I'm using just one. So I'm like doing it like fencing style. <laughs> and then I got this hand just sitting there in the way and i'm like forgetting that it's there <laughs> but i wish there was an option where you could use one motion controller or two i think that kind of would have been nice um obviously with the playstation vr it does not have high definition but you're getting something close to it so i think if this game was in high def graphically i think it looked a heck of a lot better but they still look solid 
So um, if I was to rate this game um, between one and five, I would give it probably, I would probably give it a four. I would give it a four. Um, the reason why I would take a point away is because the, of the glitchiness and some of the bugginess. And um, like you can't move smoothly on, on a lot of stuff. You're basically having to fall behind. So you're doing the whole point and click and then like kind of jumping kind of thing. I, I did. I, to this day, I still don't like that in any of my VR games. So I usually change those to smoothing so I can move myself, which is a lot better. But um, still, very solid game, very fun, highly recommended. Demar, have you played anything new lately or any type of game you want to give a review on? Uh, well, this uh, this particular game is about, um, I'd say about a year old. Came uh, It came out literally right at around the close to the tail end of uh, 2018. But uh, right now, currently, I'm playing uh, God Eater 3. Oh, I'm okay. A huge of, I'm a huge fan of the God Eater series. Love that game to death. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's a game that revolves around these creatures that are called gods. In which case, basically, you're, uh, you're basically this team that gets created. And basically, they go through this process in which case they have what's called a bios factor that's Im embedded into their, into their bodies. And this bios factor, uh, once it takes hold they're given a weapon, which is called a God Ark, which is made of pretty much parts of origami, which is the technical name for the creatures that you fight in this game. And basically what the Bios Factor does is it allows you to be able to use that God Ark. And technically, for the most part, you almost pretty much become like an origami yourself for the most part. And the thing about it is, uh, in the first game, you only had different types of classes. You had your snipers, you had your uh, your melees, you had your hammers, that kind of thing. And then come the transition of two, in which case, instead of uh, everyone using just a single base type weapon, now the weapon can go from uh, a sword and it can transform into a gun to where you can switch to ranged attacks, whatever the situation calls for. Um, and God of the Three, same thing. The only thing is now the fighting system is definitely much more amped up. There's a lot more uh, strategy that goes into it. Um, you definitely have to be able to utilize. If you're a veteran of the series, then the learning curve won't be that bad. But there's still going to be the way you usually attack the origami in the first two games. You can't really do the same way in, in three. Three, you definitely have to be more on your toes and kind of more think ahead strategically wise. Um, one of the things that they have in uh, this particular game that did not uh, that didn't exist in the last two was uh, a system called Engage, in which case it's a system to where basically you actually link up with another with another character and you and basically your attack power is boosted based on that character's peripherals. So that's a real cool aspect to try to master. You're still able to craft weapons. Um, like in all the other games, you can custom create your character right from the start, which is awesome. Um, so I've been using literally the same character makeup in all of them just to kind of keep that consistency with my character going throughout the game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another thing that I love about this game is, although so far the storyline, it, it, it's pretty it, it's pretty good to me, although I know uh, the reviews on many other people, the, the storyline is a little bit bland. Um, so far, I haven't really experienced any of that. So far, it's actually been pretty exciting. Um, I know that uh, right now, as far as for this particular game, um, we deal with um, there's this uh, this uh, occurrence which is called ash storms and the ashlands. In which case, these creatures seem to emerge from that. And there's these bigger, more powerful ones that everyone tries to completely steer clear from because these things are like like literally godlike creatures with incredible capabilities. And one of them actually uh, attacks the caravan that we happen to have been rescued on, my, me and my team. Originally, we started off, we were in a prison, in which case we were just dogs to them. Um, we weren't given any particular kinds of names. We were given a number. But when we're out in the field, like my character, he's not called whatever the name of my character is. He's just called Hound One. And that is it. We're just dogs to them and we're treated badly. 
if we die, they don't care. They got plenty of other God eaters to replace us, that kind of thing. So it would. So the fact that uh, Ash Storm, I don't want to try to give away too much stuff, but needless to say, a we were able to finally get out. But now it's like it, it started at the beginning of a whole new different series of issues and problems. But the caravan that we were rescued on gets attacked and it was and it was containing a special kind of cargo on there. Now, I'm not going to say what that cargo was, but when I found out what the cargo was, it, it, it was pretty cool. Once we really dove into the reason behind what was being transported and everything else. So the game is really fun. Um if you uh, if you happen to be a fan of uh, God Eater, I think another type of game that also plays upon that also, uh, not as far as that storyline or fighting base system, but uh, for those of you who have heard of uh, Code V, which is another awesome game, they actually have some Code V type outfits and stuff in this game. But uh, other than that, the game is really fun. I love the battle system. There's a lot of stuff to take advantage of. There's a lot of stuff. You can create bullets. You can create new uh, god arcs. Um, you can uh, develop other types of uh, what we have, what's called burst skills, which unlocks different um, um, abilities within the biosphere of our of our body's genetic DNA. So there's like, there's so many different things to unlock. There's so many different things to experiment with. So overall, I, I think it's a great game uh, for the most part, as far as what I played up until now, I put about eight hours into it. Uh, there's also side quests that you can choose to do optionally. You don't have to, you can just stick to the story and just go right through it. Um, is this game multiplayer I, or is it single player? Uh, this one it is multiplayer, but I but I don't have the multiplayer function because I don't have PlayStation Plus. But, ah, you know, um, but. so quick question. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, <laughs> but um, is this kind of like does it kind of play like like Monster Hunter in which it's like an open world? Uh, it does have a little bit of a Monster Hunter ish kind of feel. Um, okay. I wouldn't say it's totally, totally open world because you are limited to a map and where you can go. And the one thing that I will say that I wish they did improve upon when it came to um, the God Eater games was the fact of more, more interaction with the environment itself. You can't really, you can't really explore every single structure. You can't really climb on top of things, at least mm -hmm. not a whole lot. I think that would have added a lot more depth to the game. Uh, so as far as for for being in these environments, the environments do, it does feel kind of flat, kind of boring because of the fact you're kind of limited to what you can do. But, um, uh, so, so what do you that, rate this game? That's yes, what I'm curious. On a scale of one to five, I'm going to give this game about, I'm going to give it a solid 3.5. Okay. Respectable. I, it's a, it's I a respectable thinking, game. I was, I was thinking about a four, but at the same time, I know that more than likely, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly where the storyline is going to go as far as moving forward. But I know that's definitely been an issue to me was the mm -hmm. fact of the environments just aren't interactive enough. I, I want to be able to do more on these fields, not to mention the fact I think it should have a little bit more uh, open world immersion when it comes to that. So uh, I was a bit disappointed that they didn't at least improve the formula on that. But they did improve the battle system, which uh, which is the reason why I gave it that that three point five. But yeah, the game's overall still really good. You guys keep an eye on PlayStation and Xbox and Nintendo, especially like their their online and their gaming stores within the console. Um, you guys make sure you keep an eye on those games like God Eater and stuff like that. Sony and Nintendo, Nintendo and Microsoft run deals all the time excuse me on the digital versions they run all kinds of deals so you might if you're interested in checking that game out and if you're interested in checking out vader if you have a playstation vr um you know my game's a solid recommendation all right what, for you what do you think i mean i know you only said you're only like eight hours in but what from your eight hours of playing would you recommend this game <laughs> absolutely i definitely recommend it um i kind of uh so far i haven't they haven't really referenced anything as far as uh, what's happened in the previous two games, but 
I think it's best to start off with the first one just to kind of get a feel of exactly how things transitioned because the, the, the evolution of the gameplay and how you go about using your character does change quite a bit from game to game. So there, so it, it, I definitely recommend it. All right. Well, all right, you guys. Um, I don't have anything more. You, you got anything you want to touch on? Um, as far as Nintendo wise, I know there has been some rumors, only rumors, people, that um, <laughs> Nintendo uh, is suppo- supposedly going to be trying to uh, work on a Nintendo Switch 2 or Nintendo Switch Pro, which, oh. uh, which potentially is definitely going to be utilizing uh, 4K capabilities and things of that nature. Right now, that's still kind of up in the air. But uh, a lot of people were wondering if Nintendo was going to come out with another console of some sort. Um, so that's definitely something to also keep an eye on. I'm definitely going to be following this closely because I definitely want to see what Nintendo has in store as far as for its next um, next big thing. As I far still as don't it. think they should do one. That's just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> But that, I mean, there's another thing too that's that I also believe. About. I mean, yeah, yeah. They should I mean, just go the way of Sega and just start making games. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. I know some of y'all Nintendo fanboys probably gonna hate me for that, but whatever. <laughs> I think they should just make games, put it on the other two consoles. But hey, I mean, three consoles isn't like terrible. But man, <laughs> man, yeah. <laughs> And see, that's I was kind of contemplating that myself. <laughs> it, it told I was like, Is Nintendo gonna get to the point where they're gonna say, "Okay, you know what? We quit." Right? <laughs> that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for that, and that has not happened yet. I don't know, man. <laughs> Nintendo is like a cockroach sometimes; it just will not die. So, <laughs> but anyway, hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, greatly appreciate it. We love that the fact that you guys interact with us and join us and and just love what we do here. And we we do it we do it for the love. It's all love. You know what I'm saying? In the end, we're all gamers. We all like to play games and we all want to continue to play games. So, with that being said, again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure you guys leave a comment below. If you like what you heard today, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not already and turn on that bell for all notifications so you are notified of all Platform Gamer Podcast uh, videos and we'll even drop an audio here and there. Who knows? You know, and it's not just me. Okay, so Damar will probably, I keep doing that. Damar will probably (laughs) do a video version just by himself sometimes if I'm unable to do it which is fine. You know, I did the very first episode by myself and then so far we've been together. So it's been, it's been great, but he may have a couple of stories that, you know, that may be breaking news that he's like, I got to get these out there and he'll do that. You know, he ain't got to wait for me to do it. He can just up and do it. (laughs) So (laughs) absolutely. So yeah, I, I, um, so definitely, uh, there might there are definitely gonna be a couple times where I'm I'm probably gonna be uploading myself. So don't be surprised if you say, "Hey, we're your partner in crime." Don't worry, he's around. But right, you know, right, there's something, something else out there to you guys. Right, right. And you can also make sure you guys like like us on Facebook, and um, you know check us out there where we'll be dropping a lot of our information off of there, and you will be dropping information and little things that we discuss on um, Twitter and. Um, Instagram. I always seem to forget that one. Twitter and Instagram, and you can reach us on both of those at Platform Gamer P1. Now, side note, um, they did have three days. IGN did three days of Gamescom. I actually missed the first one, so I I'll still have to go back and watch it. Too. Yeah, so I watched part of the second one, and I started watching the third one, and like for some reason, I don't know what it was about that third episode. I just could not get into it. I couldn't. Like some of the games and stuff they showed, they looked like they were on like the original PlayStation. I I don't know what it was, but I was just like, yeah, I'm done. (laughs) So I just turned it off. I'll eventually get back to it so I can watch it because I am very curious about some of the other games that's going to be coming out. But anyway, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm hoping my outro works better than the last time. 
We'll see here in just a moment. But Damar, any last things you want to say? Uh, just want to, again, thank you guys for uh, uh, coming with us on this journey as we continue to master our craft on, uh, on this podcast. Uh, we definitely hope you guys definitely uh, leave some of your feedback and definitely share your experiences as far as uh, watching our content and things of that nature. Um, you know, throw us some ideas if you guys like to, if there's certain topics you guys feel we should uh, touch up on or even touch up on more, you know, any kind of information would be helpful. You know, anything to grow the channel and to give you guys what you want, you know, because that, that's been the biggest thing. And also, just as a side little nugget, too, if you guys happen to be uh, fans of Call of Duty and Activision, they're, uh, they're supposed to be giving out like 10,000 uh, betas going out for their uh, Call of Duty tournament. I guess that's going to be uh, being conducted toward the end of this month, I believe. Oh, so, that's going to be an interesting little tournament. Yeah. So um, uh, speaking of Call of Duty, they did drop the trailer for Call of Duty Cold War. Dude, Ronald Reagan. Oh my God, <laughs> Ronald freaking Reagan, baby, was in that game. That caught me by surprise. I did not see that one coming. But just Neither from the I. trailer that I saw, it looked it looked like it was going to be interesting. So we'll see once we actually get to the gameplay portion of it and what seems like it will be the same as any normal Black Ops or you know what they've done different. But nevertheless, Black Ops Cold War trailer is out. If you have not seen it yet, check it out. Let us know in the comments below here on YouTube what you think. You know, and uh, yeah, that's that's all I got. And that's all I got as well. All right. Well, you guys take care. Have a wonderfully good night, and we will we'll see you all next time. Good night. <laughs>